Welcome back to the Idle Engineer and the Dice Rolling series. The first part of this series was building a dice tray with UV LEDs. Now it's time to make custom UV reactive dice. For the silicone molding process, I'm using Game Science dice. These dice have not been tumbled after injection molding, resulting in nice crisp edges. There is, however, a sprue mark that needs to be sanded down carefully. You can see it right here. Using 320 grit sandpaper, tacked with hot glue to the workbench, I carefully sand down the high spot. Once the sprue mark is removed, we can begin building the mold for the silicone. For the initial mold set, I'm using a D20 and a D12 dice. My goal is to make some test molds and casts. To maintain as fair of a roll as possible, uniformity is key. To attempt to make a complete copy of the dice, it will take some refinement of the process. Making some mistakes will be our guide. For the first set of test molds, I'm using plastic sheet and hot glue to build a box, much like the first video on the channel. Then to build a sprue, or channel for the resin, I am using small sections of drinking straw glued to the lowest number on the dice, in this case, one. I chose to use the lowest number for each dice since that face will require finishing and any number impressions will be lost. After gluing up the sides of the box, the outside edges are sealed with hot glue. The same process was used on the D12 box. I was a bit more careful in laying out the second box. The key was to make the boxes large enough to make a good silicone mold, but small enough not to waste silicone. Both boxes complete, a light spray of mold release can be applied, and the silicone can be mixed and poured. Mixing the silicone and resin, it's important to introduce as few bubbles as possible. Gas from these bubbles may cause voids or narrow channels in the mold as well as the cast part. Now the silicone is poured and allowed to cure. Now the plastic can be peeled away from the silicone and the mold cut away from the pattern in a zigzag motion. This allows for easier realignment of the two halves of the mold. Now it's time to test the molds by casting some dice, using two-part Amazing Brand casting resin. Mold release is lightly sprayed into the silicone and the resin poured in after reinforcing the mold with some blue tape. The resin is a one-to-one -one mix and I use a graduated mixing cup to get both parts even. Try to pour the resin more carefully than I accomplished here. Now the molds are set aside to cure. Be cautious not to demold early. Resin in the molds will take longer to cure than any excess resin kept aside. Now the tape can be removed and the freshly cast dye inspected. At first look, the dice come out pretty good. There seems to be some flashing where resin leaked into the cut sides of the mold, but everything looks okay. It is only upon closer inspection that some problems become evident. Here on the D12, there are some bubbles and surface pitting. This could be from bubbles in the resin or too much mold release buildup. The D20 also has some surface pitting and a prominent bubble at one of the vertices near the sprue. To check to see if it is a problem with the mold, a new casting was made with much lighter use of mold release and careful pouring of the resin, using some squeezing and tapping to try and reduce the bubbles. After curing, the second set of dice was demolded and examined. As you can see, some of the surface pitting was reduced with lighter use of the mold release, but only a little. After closer inspection of the sprue, it looks like the dice were molded unevenly, causing high spots in the molds. 
Knowing the straws were not a good option for the sprue, since keeping the dice perfectly flat was difficult, I wanted to make the molds with the dice glued directly to the bottom of the mold. To do this, I wanted to build a reliable mold making jig. So I used some leftover Lexan and epoxy to make a molding mold. My plan was to have a two-piece jig, one with three sides and one with two sides. When a mold was to be made, the pattern could be glued to one side and the two halves brought together and sealed with hot glue. To make the two pieces of the jig, I roughed up each side of the Lexan and applied epoxy. Now to test the jig. A D20 was glued down and the two halves were brought together and glued in place. Using the now familiar silicone molding technique and my great pouring skills, a new mold was made. Even being careful, there was some bubble formation. After repeating the mold process for the D20, D12, D10, Percentile, and D8, it was time to test the UV reactive powder in some clear epoxy resin. The goal is to make a set of dice for Dungeons & Dragons that allows multiple dice to be cast at the same time rather than single dice cast repeatedly. This is a concept of the Dice of Rolling Kickstarter, so if this process seems really long and complicated, go check them out and support their awesome work. When adding the UV powder to the resin, I got a better result by stirring it into the first phase and then adding the second part of the resin, otherwise the catalyzing action started to thicken and there was significant clumping. The epoxy has a 24 to 72 hour total cure time. This is why I chose to make multiple molds and do a batch casting. With a longer cure time, you might want to reinforce the molds with some blue tape as the epoxy tends to leak out over time. I found during the first few hours of the cure, there's some shrinkage in the cast. I used additional resin left over to top off the molds. Now it's time to see if they'll glow. Now that we have some cool glowing dice, we can work on final finishing and painting in those numbers. Thanks for watching The Idle Engineer. Like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram.